Hello and welcome. My name is Nilaus. This is another installment of our tutorial series called Base in a Book, where I will be providing some clean, crisp designs and also providing blueprints for it. So without further ado, this one, we are going to look into red and green science and also how to set up labs in an efficient manner. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blueprint that is also provided and just stamp it down. So this blueprint will be designing while I just built the first part of it. I will be uh, I'll be walking through what the purpose is. The purpose of this is to produce red and green signs. It's done very early game. This is actually the first thing that we built on the, on the bus. And therefore, like all my future tutorial series here, we'll be assuming that we have a main bus established. And we are basically just taking things off the bus for the work we do, like so. I've already prepared three inputs, copper, iron, and green circuits. They're coming in here. And that's where we, that's kind of the input we need. This is the, this is for me at least, the very first thing I built on the main bus. And therefore it's, I want to try to start with this one. You may notice that I'm using blue inserters and blue inserters are not like the early, early game. You can start by using the yellow inserters, however, in order for this to actually work, operate at the speed that it's designed for, then it needs to be uh, blue inserters. That is important. But it will start, you can get the ball, the ball rolling with just yellow inserters. And there. Okay, so let's walk through what's, uh, what's going on here. And I'll build these two just so we can see, look at the ratios. So we have red signs. Red signs require, require copper plate. Well, that's easy. And iron gear wheels. It takes five seconds to produce. And in my setup, I really want to make sure that I produce two of each science per second. That is what I scale everything for. That's a pretty good setup. That's a bit far zoomed out. Sorry. So I have one, two, 10 of red science. And we can also look at green science. The green science requires something slightly more complex, one inserter and one transport belt. This has a six second cycle time. So in order to produce two per second, I need, I need, as you can see, 12. Now it's important to note that maybe you're sitting at home and thinking, hey, this is only 0.75. But as long as everything here is 0.75 crafting speed, it evens out. So when I say two per second, I'm talking idealized crafting time. As long as we build towards that, that's fine. Now, then, then in order to build this, we look at these here. This one is producing one per half second, but it takes two iron. This is the reason why I need two inserters here because one inserter will not be able to keep up with this. Two, insert, two blue inserters is actually needed in order for this one to keep up without any uh, inserter bonus. And at this point you don't have inserter bonuses. Similarly here, as long as it takes one per item, then that is fine. I will actually be upgrading these a bit. And the only way I do that, the uh, reason I do that is so that we can see how they operate when they are fully operational. So I'll start scaling these up. And the reason I take the iron last is because iron is going to be the most heavily utilized. So let's have a look at it. You can see here, this one is the green line is continually flowing. Every time one is created, it fills us over. You can see it also has a short break. This one as well, you can see it's fully occupied. That is exactly how it is. If I, for example, just take one of these out, Oh, uh, see, not quite, not quite. And that will make this one stagger, it staggers. So it must must be a two for, for this. One item per half second can be supported by a blue inserter, but not a yellow inserter. So you can see here, they are just continuing to running, putting out on a nice pace. This is of course outputting faster and it has idle time, but that's not a really a concern. So let's continue working on the rest of it. This is pretty easy. You can see here I use yellow inserters because yellow inserters will be sufficient for what I need here. There is no point in building using blue inserters for this space. Now the next part I always do when I build this is I take the power poles because the power poles will allow me much easier time to insert, to, uh, to place the assemblers between them afterwards. So that's the only one that's really difficult. And then I place this, oops, don't get in the way. And drag it up. This is okay. Just to explain, in case you didn't 
are not familiar with that option it'll just drag this one down that's the copy paste function and it works by holding down mouse as well so you shift right click to copy and shift left click to paste and then you just hold shift and le left click while running upwards and then all of them will be pasted and since this is me i put lights in all of my blueprints because blueprint light is nice during the darkness and therefore i do that okay so now the next part is inserting all of the yellow i'll start from the top and i'll start from this part and you may find this a bit tedious, like why are we not doing this? But I really want to show you how, how fast this can be done from the blueprint. And also sort of the technique of how to build it. And I'll, I have plenty of things to talk about in the meantime. Almost there. There. Oops, that one just turned around. So that's six minutes of, uh, of activity. And we have now two, two per second built. So that's not a big deal. And look, it's in line, it's working. This is stockpiling. And this all of these are running, are operational. That's very nice. So now comes the next part of the challenge. And that is, so how do we build the science labs? In version 1.15, there is actually a new feature. I'll just build it like this, where, as you can see here, I just need a research enabled. And there that they can actually feed from each other. So you can actually make long chains, but remember it does take some time to get in there and put it into the next. And that, if you have like hundreds, then it just cascades all the way through. Not efficient, but this is a great way so that you don't have to make like make, making stupidly long lines. I'll just move, move that, there we go. But of course I have a blueprint. I have a blueprint that scales, let's, uh, let's actually Look at something first here you can see there are seven different science packs so the challenge is also how are we going to get all the science packs in there i can easily just make like the simple one as the early game progresses and just take there we go and then sort it out later but i don't want to do that i want to make sure that this thing is scalable for the future so i just i'll just make this one so what have i built I'll show. Built five down. I don't like building deeper than five down. That's more of a sort of a, a personal preference. And here, this is the interesting part. Let's uh, let's review this. So, in order for me to have seven different science packs going in here, I'm going to need four belts. Well, four belts. That's something we can do. I'll be taking this one for example. And let's hook it up. So for example here, I put this in here and I'll just complete the rest of this. So in this case, I just want to show how this works. Here I can have some of the other science packs coming in from the side and they will be able to put in here and they'll then be up, uh, be inserted automatically into this. There is this constraint that the red inserters are not as fast. You can see here, it does take a bit more time, but it's not really that significant. So I really like this setup. You can of course build it just with a single blue inserter, but it doesn't, it actually doesn't matter because they will, they'll fill up to that extra one. It's only in the beginning, it, it makes a difference. And the brilliant part about this blueprint as well is that it is completely tileable. So in our case, we need to ask ourselves, how many do we actually need to consume this? Well, this one is producing two per second. Well, two per second. And the cycle time for research, let's have a look at it, is usually 30 seconds. So in order to, produce, to consume two per second, I would need 60 science labs. That's a lot, right? But remember, these ones are only producing at 0.75. So for the time being, when we use the blue inserters or blue assemblers, we'll only be producing one and a half per second, not two per second. But one and a half per second, and that requires then 45 of these. A more manageable number. Let's look at this research. This research is called research, uh, research lab research speed one, gives 20%, and the other one that's red, 
red green science gives another 30 percent so if i have these two 30 science labs will actually suffice to consume all of this which is exactly what i have built here so you, you see here it's it's not that big it's 30 science labs that's i mean i can easily build that and as well these belt braiding you don't need the belt braiding at this point in in the case of, of just the normal one just just leave it like this i also would argue that do not start messing with like having having them insert like this it is not efficient just keep it from one line you only want to trickle it five down you can trickle it a bit further down but five is such a nice uh, number to remember you can actually also build it on the other side if you should feel so inclined like simply just taking this blueprint and building it on the other side and there you have it as well so that's that can also be made bigger but again you don't need to make it any bigger because it uh, it doesn't support it we have three on either side whichever you prefer so there you have it we have a nice clean design for red and green science off the bus and in line as well we have a nice clean design for labs to be set up and that scales all the way to the very end game even to the rocket science and that should be uh, pretty good to go and we have these two blueprints they are available i'll be sharing those so i hope you enjoyed it found it educational or at the very least inspiring or whatever just uh, so thank you very much for joining if you liked it leave a like a comment and of course subscribe for more content like this or like uh, the playthroughs thank you very much and i'll hope to see you another time